Hello everybody, this is Randy and Randy Rails, and we're gonna do an episode on railroad crossings because we know that it's hard to do railroad crossings when you don't have nothing to buy from Walters and you run out and you're like, well, gee whiz, I want a railroad crossing. So I'm gonna show you how to do one that's cheap and affordable. Coming up next on Randy's Rails. right here of this diesel house was done using the technique I'm about ready to show you. It is gigantic. It's six feet long, okay? Now, there's nothing that anyone sells that would make something like this that you could buy that I know of because I've done my search in high end and around and I had to do it the way I'm gonna show you. It took me some time to figure this out. Now, if you look at it, you got your rails are filled in real nice. And it looks just like asphalt was poured. It looks just like a facility that would be for a diesel yard. Now, this technique is used by using some simple compounds. I will show you in a minute. Right here, you can see where the asphalt comes to an end where they're pouring it. And they said, okay, that's it, we're done. And the steamroller stopped right around in here. And there's a way to get that effect. You have a, you got asphalt right here, meeting a concrete embutment here. This is a ramp that's made out of concrete for the trucks to back up onto. So they'd have a ramp, so it's all, has an angle that comes up. And then it goes around to the back, and you can see where the truck is up against this dock. Now, when I move this truck a little bit closer here, you can see that, okay, boom. We've got some where it lines up pretty good with the back of the dock here, this uh, this wooden ramp. That's all done with this technique that I'm about ready to show you. You can do this technique for, if you want to do a lot of street running scenes. And this would probably be the best thing to do for a lot of street running. As you can see, this locomotive here is like it's street running, like the rails are embedded in the asphalt. And this is the effect that you're going for. You're going for embedded rails. And that is kind of like what we're gonna try to get for you here in just a minute. Things you're going to need is this foam tape right here. And this foam tape is used to make your, it's like concrete former. So it's gonna be like your former. You're kinda of like pouring concrete in a, in a miniature scale. All right, then you're gonna need some of this flexible spackling. All right, comes in this type of can right here. You get this at Home Depot or Lowe's, probably at Menards. And then you go, oh, and then you're gonna need uh, this right here. You could use this as well. Now this is another alternative. Spackling is all it is, all right? So you can take your spackling and then you're gonna do your super glaze. You're gonna need the super glaze. So you're probably wondering, well, gee, what's the super glaze for? Well, I'll show you how this works because really you want it with the super glaze. Now you could use just the plaster, but if you move your layout around or if it's a modular system, you're putting it in the trailers, you want it to where it's not gonna be any type of possible cracking or breaking in the future, flaking, that sort of thing. So you're gonna need your super glaze. So again, you can get this over at Lowe's and Home Depot and Menards and Home Improvement Centers, that sort of thing. Your putty knives. This is you're gonna need a get these, a set of these at Home Depot or Lowe's and or Menards, like I said, any or Ace Hardware. Jeez, I forgot Ace Hardware. So you can get all the stuff at these places. You can see here we got a lot of industry going on. And uh, we got some stuff going on here where it requires some railroad crossings. Now you got this, you got this building right here, okay? These guys, this company. Now they've got to have a way to get across the railroad tracks. And the way we had it before wasn't that good. And there was no way that an HO scale car could have gone across the old ones. So what we did was you took your putty knife and you put in your spackling. All right, you get all in there and you let it dry. 
So now we got ourselves a railroad crossing, but we're not done yet. This is the beginning. Over here, same thing, this railroad crossing here. So it allows the transition from the street, so then go across to get access to the back of this train station and this Pepsi plant here. Then you have another one. Now this is where it's really important to do this technique because it's hard to buy anything that will contour to this type of measurements here with this type of, um, you get this turnout here and it's, it's going in there. And then you got these dimensions that are hard to create with really any other way. Now there's, there's all other techniques. You've seen these model railroad magazines and all that about using uh, some other types of stuff. But this way here, it's pretty quick, goes in there, and it's going to look good when you're done, and it's pretty cheap. All right, now we got these other ones here. These are a foundation. This is a foundation for a building that's going to go there. And then over here, we've got a parking lot that's going in for a fast food restaurant, okay? Now, here is your, your foam tape we used as formers. That gives us something for the putty knife to go up against. Now you can see the 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 way it is here. Your former, which is made out of foam tape that I showed you earlier. That's all this foam tape is. It's it's door insulation tape is what it is. But it works great because you put it down. Then you've got something for your putty knife to go on. So. That's the idea of this foam tape. And it brings it up a quarter of an inch to the level you want it to be, and then you can sand it down to have your, whatever height you want it to be for your parking lot. All right, here we are. We got our rigid sander right here. You can use any other type of sander, will work. What's nice about this type of sander, it's got the points on it. It's made for getting in the corners, like doing floors, that sort of thing. It's perfect for this type of application here. So, you take it, and you're going to sand. Okay. okay, what you're trying to get here is your spackling to be level with your rail, okay, which it looks pretty level to me. You want it to be flush where it looks like the asphalt was poured and pressed and applied in between the rails when they came along and they put the asphalt in. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit more sanding to get a little bit better because we have some irregularities here. But for the most part, it looks looks pretty good for what we're going to do. Here we have our foam tape, quarter inch thick. This is what we're using for our concrete foundation for our Spectre's Brewery. And you can see the putty knife here is going to insert underneath one of the foam tapes now this foam tape is about a quarter inch now it gives foam tape is your formers just like in concrete when you're pouring concrete in real life an area for your putty knives to travel on to give you this effect of your slab all right now this is dried spackling sanded level for our specters brewery this is our specters brewery okay and he has to have a concrete foundation for him to sit on so he'll be pretty level get yourself a, a level here and he likes like he's he's pretty level okay i mean he's within there and um that way you've got some more of, of a level area for your brewery to sit on in your building now this can be used for any building okay and it makes it level so you can bring your your car under there to get loaded up and um so now we'll show you the next step here of how to complete this foundation so it looks good. Now you're gonna have to take off your foam. Now I'll show you this in a minute. Now this foam, sometimes the adhesive that's on the back of the foam seal doesn't want to adhere to whatever you got, okay? And even if you sand it down real good, um, it's not gonna stick. So what I use is a hot glue gun 
and I put some hot glue down underneath this seal right here, all right? So we're gonna pull this seal up, and what you wanna do is uh, gently pull it up, all right? And you're gonna pull it up to where it starts to separate, all right, from your slab, from your concrete slab. So basically what you're doing here is you're, you're pulling your concrete former, which is this quarter inch uh, seal tape, foam tape, all right? I told you guys earlier, you get any hardware store. Now, that, look what we got here. We have ourselves a concrete foundation that is made out of spackling. But we all know that uh, eventually, if you just left this like this, it's going to crumble and flake if it's being moved a lot, transported, and it's going to fall apart. So we're going to show you how to seal this to where it's not going to do that. All right, here we are. We got the foam tape removed from our concrete foundation. Now, like I said before, your foam tape was used as formers to give an area for your putty knife to travel along to apply and smooth out the spackling. So there you go, there's your concrete foundation. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna seal that in so this concrete foundation will stay just as it is. All right, okay, here we are. Now we're back to our, our grade crossings here. This is our asphalt embedded rails. That's what we're working on here. Now, you got these little tools right here that you can get at um, Harbor Freight is where I got them at. So if you got a Harbor Freight around you, that's they're really cheap, they're like around three bucks. And um, this is a little tool that's used to uh, make our uh, edges of our asphalt. Now, you gotta figure when they're coming through the pouring of asphalt, where's the asphalt gonna be? So you just gently dig out your asphalt that you've made with your spackling and you're gonna get it out of these areas so you're gonna make it kind of uniformly. When you gotta remember when they come through and they put asphalt down, it's never squared up like like people want to say. The people say, well, they, they make it perfectly square, and it's no, they don't. In these rural areas and these industrial areas, they come through and they throw the asphalt down and they roll it over with a steamroller and they're done with it. They just roll it down. We're in the general specific areas that they want so the trucks can turn because they made this so trucks can turn around in this industrial area and get from the highway here, come across so we can get down to the Spectre Brewing. That's not there yet, but there's the concrete foundation for it. Now you got these other things down here. You've got you your know, Pepsi plant here, all right? So you got trucks got to get in from this back street. They got to come in, go between this Morton Salt Company through here so they can get in here and back into this loading dock area. So now we're going to have to put a, a crossing here so they can come in from the front side. We're going to put a highway in over here connecting here. Now these railroad crossings here are terrible. All right, let me show you one here. Let's let's put a let's put a vehicle here. All right, uh, let's see here. We're going to use uh, use this '57 Chevy. All right, there he is. Okay, now you look at him. This '57 Chevy. All right, real nice. He's 187th scale. All right. Now he's trying to come across this railroad crossing. This is a, this is an old railroad crossing someone tried to build a long time ago. Now this Chevy's going to come across, right? Now here he comes. He's like, right here, boom! He's coming up. Whoa! What? We're high centered. How's that possible? That's not working. Okay. So in the in a real world, will this would this railroad crossing be like this? No. He's never going to make it. He's going to high center. All right. He's going to be stuck. All right, train's going to come along. We're going to run into them and destroy them. We don't want that, all right? So this railroad crossing here is horrible, all right? It was quickly done for visual appeal. They used some, some styrene sheets they put in there, but they couldn't get the height, all right, right and true. You want, you want some trueness. You want something to where 
you're not high centering. You're coming up off the road, right? You're coming up, boom, that's crazy. That's not gonna work. That's, 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 that's terrible, we, we've got a problem here. This isn't gonna work. Now this has been bothering me for a long time uh, with this particular part of our layout here. So what we've done here is we put the, the spackling down. Now you put the spackling down, look what we got. We've got, we've got beautiful smooth, here he comes. He's motoring up. Now, he's going to motor up. All right, now these wheels don't rotate on the Chevy too well. He's coming across. He's going to clear pretty good, right? He's going to clear pretty good there, no problem, all right? He's going to come across. We come across these other set of tracks here, all right? Here he comes along. Now, he's coming along, and look how level that is. All right, there, there, there's no rails hitting the bottom of the chassis of the, of the of the car. That's what we're looking for. He's coming down. He's making his departure off of the apron, the apron of your railroad crossing. He's coming off of that. He's going to make his right-hand turn. All right, he's going to make a right-hand turn on the next part of the street. All right, so this is what we're looking for. This is what you're looking for, for people who are frustrated now, like I said, when they're putting the asphalt down, they're just putting it down in these rural areas of, of wherever. They're putting it down and they're taking a the steamroller or going over it, and they don't really care pretty much how it's gonna look. They just put it down. So we're gonna kind of do that. Now we're gonna go along with our dental tools here, because that's pretty much what these are. They're, they're like fine tools, dental tools, and you're gonna remove your spackling. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. We're gonna go ahead and at least get the gist of it, pretty much. And um, there's your tools for this job. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna show you how to seal our spackling that we got on our railroad crossing. So what you got here is the Parks Super Clays. And it needs to be cleaned up with acetone. Now be advised that if you're going to clean it up, the acetone has to be done before it starts to harden. So when you look at the instructions, it says clean up. Super glaze them to clean before fully curing. While still in its liquid state, acetone or alcohol will work best for tool and work cleanup. Important, wash hands and expose skin thoroughly soap and after blah, blah, blah. But basically, the most important thing is to know is get you a container of acetone because you can save your paintbrush real quick by rinsing it out in the acetone and reuse your paintbrush over and over again. Now, in the instructions, it says, oh, well, get yourself a sacrificial paintbrush. Well, they're right about that, but you can still save it if you are able to apply your super glaze to whatever you're gonna apply it to and then go back and rinse out your paintbrush. So what you can do is you can do your part A and part B of your super glaze. And your part A is your resin, your part B is your activator, so what you can do is you can mix equal parts of part A and part B, so it's gonna be a one for one. All right, so you can take a measuring device if you want, you know, if you wanted to measure, you know, whatever, a, a cup, and there'd be a cup of part A, and there'd be a cup of part B, all right, so one to one. So you take your cups here, and you want to use some disposable cups to mix this in. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and get this done. And you want to use some stirring sticks in your sacrificial paintbrush. And then you want to use some latex gloves because it's going to be pretty messy. All right, so then we got that accomplished here. So here's your acetone. So we're going to go ahead and get this mixed up. Okay, we've got our super glaze mixed. And what you're going to do is you're going to take it. And it's already starting to set up, so you take it with your paintbrush and start applying it liberally to all the spots. So you're going to put it down so you can seal up your spackling and put it down liberally. So you can do this all the way across till you cover it all up. Okay, we've got our super glaze applied. What's nice about the super glaze is it's self-leveling. So it's gonna fill in 
flow in and fill in any areas that uh, I missed with the brush. So it's going to flow evenly and make a fairly even, I should say, a super even su surface. And uh, you're going to let it cure for 72 hours, fully cure, okay, before you can do anything else with it. So you want to mix it for three to six minutes. The instructions say to mix it in one container, part A, point B, part B, and then um, mix in that container for three minutes and transfer that into another container for and mix it for another three minutes. But I think you can get away with just uh, three minutes into one container. But anyway, follow the instructions. You're mixing instructions really well, and you'll come out with really good results. So right now, it's uh, just been applied, so we're going to let it cure. Then once we let it cure, after it's set up real well, after 72 hours, we're going to come and test it, make sure it's not tacky. And then we're going to rough it up. We're going to rough it up and then paint it. And we'll show you how to do that now. This is the railroad crossings with our embedded rails. That's the effect that we're looking at here. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for embedded rails and railroad crossings. That's primarily what this video is about. However, we'll come over here to our concrete foundation for our Spectre Brewing Company. And as you can see, it's been coated, the concrete slab, and the super glaze is self-leveling, all right? self-leveling, filling in the voids, and it's going to make it real nice and level. So when you put your building on it, it's going to be real level and look real well. And you can, again, we're going to sand it and we're going to paint it. And it's going to look good. Okay, we're back. So here we go. We're going to do some equipment that you're going to need for this next part of doing your crossovers correctly, that the way we're showing you how to do it. And uh, if you look, we're going to look at our equipment here that we got. And um, make sure you have some safety glasses, respirator, the type that resists the dust, and your Dremel tool with a Dremel attachment here, small little cutting wheel. All right. That way, uh, this is how we're going to cut our grooves. We've got to cut our grooves now. So um, we're going to show you how to do that. All right. Now, once you've Taking your Dremel and cut your grooves with your Dremel tool and your cutting wheel. You did both sides and you got to take your, some type of device like a, a tool such as a O-ring removal tool works good for me. That's what I use. And you get in here and you get whatever debris is left out. Um, I'm sorry, left inside these rails. Some uh, solidified um, epoxy plaster or whatever in there and you get it out from inside the rail which your cutting tool on your dremel tool did that pretty good already but this just gets it out the rest of it so you won't have any issues with your flanges and um, that's pretty much how you do that and you use like i said o-ring removal tools is, is a good ones to use and you also use your dental removal tools get those at harbor freight get all the stuff at harbor freight Pretty cheap. Thank you. See you in a minute. Okay. Now that we have dug out the rails, cleaned them out with the O-ring removing tools, we checked our flanges with the rolling stock, and I'll show you that here in a minute again. But we took our rigid tool here. These are perfect for this type of application. And you blend out your uneven areas here along your apron that's going up to your railroad crossing, your grade crossing. So what you got here is you've got your, your apron here. Get your asphalt from your street. Then you just want to blend it up. So you got a gradual ramp going up to the actual railroad crossing itself. Then all the way across so it's all level. And then back down on the other side. And that's the effect that you're looking for and it's so hard to get that with other ways of doing it um this seems to be a, a surefire way of getting it the way you want it and when it's done it looks extremely realistic 
And you'll see here in a minute, I've done this other grade crossing here with this industrial area. And then uh, this other one over here came out pretty good. And there's not what's good about the super glaze is you don't have to do a whole lot of sanding with the rigid tool because the super glaze epoxy is self-leveling. So it's going to find all the low spots and it's going to even it all out. So uh, we're going to go and check out the flanges here next on the clearance. All right, after you are done with sanding and taking your O-ring tool, O-ring removal tool to dig out your rails like I showed you before, um, vacuumed out the rails real good. So all the grooves now between your asphalt, super glaze and all that, is going to be not interfering with the flanges of your train. So you want to roll your rolling stock through here and check your flange clearance. All right, so we're going to show you what I'm talking about, flange clearance here. All right. You want to cut enough material with your Dremel tool so as the flanges will clear any of the railroad crossing without hanging up and lifting it up and then causing an electrical fault because that's what's going to happen. You need to try to roll a locomotive across here and it hits some material with the flange and some of the wheels lift up, then you're going to lose connectivity and it's going to be frustrating. So we're going to make sure you cut enough out of there. Now, as you can see, I have left some material on the rails I'm going to use my pinky because I put my pointer away. You can see the some material. I left that there because that's going to be used as cheap masking when I go to paint this thing. So we're going to paint this crossing. Okay, the type of paint that I'm using is this right here. You can get this at, I got this at Home Depot. All right, it is... Flat black, that's what you want. This was pretty cheap at the time. Um, it's about a dollar a can, a little bit less than that. And that's all you need. And then you can use the gray stuff, which is made by the same company. Flat gray primer paint is what we're going to use to mix it up with the asphalt to give it some diversity in the color. Okay, now we've, after we've done check the flanges, we put our first coat of paint down. We're using flat, flat black paint. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's starting to look like asphalt. It's starting to look like a railroad crossing. And um, it's filling in the grooves. Now you can come back through with a paintbrush we put some asphalt paint from Woodland Scenics down inside the grooves if the paint doesn't get down in there. But we're going to come back through with some um, gray, flat gray. We're going to lighten this up a little bit, make it look like a little bit more like asphalt because we all know asphalt isn't completely perfectly flat black unless it was just, just laid down. But this is going to dry to a flat finish. Right now it's shiny because I just applied it. Alrighty, we are now seeing that the, the paint is drying a flat black, and that's what we want. So we're going to come back, and we're going to go ahead and put some little bit of gray over it. Um, it's, it's flattening out. It's not as shiny as it was before. So we're going to put some gray on it, a touch of gray, gray it up a little bit, and see what it looks like. All right, this is what we're gonna to use to gray up our grade crossing that we're making. This is flat gray. That's what you want, flat gray. Now, sometimes you can't find the really cheapo paints. Um, this is Rust-Oleum flat gray. You get this at Home Depot or any other hardware store. And this is what we're gonna to use to gray it up. Let's see in just a minute. There you have it. Little dash of gray. That's all you got to do. You just lightly 
spray a little bit of gray, flat gray primer over your grade crossing and you've got asphalt. So this is what we got here. We have asphalt. I'm going to back off this here so you can uh, kind of absorb it a little bit. This is looking pretty, starting to look more realistic. And once we get all the masking removed, we can start uh, detailing the rails because we have some shellac. Um, the epoxy, which is covering the rails, so I, I left that on there because that is like a masking. And that particular rail is from getting painted. I'll show you how to take that off and how to clean up the rails. And then we'll test run a locomotive through there. All right, let's uh, show some other, so we can get some more close-ups here. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, here we go. We are done with our painting and our uh, color matching and everything that we did with our gray paint that we did, uh, did a light spray over. So this is our final result. Here's your tools that we're gonna to use to clean these rails up. Now these are little dental tools. You can get these at Harbor Freight or order them online somewhere. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this guy right here. He's got like a spade on him, all right? He's got like a, an area where you can come along and you can start getting the material off of your rails. Now there's different ways to do it with this type of tool, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, just do a real quick demonstration on how the stuff peels up. And what it does is it peels up as you push it along. And we left it on there because it was a masking. So it did its job. So now we just gotta come along and peel it up. So there you go, see it comes up. Just gotta come along with it. Take it up, and it's starting to come up. You can keep doing that until you get most of the material off. You have to come at different angles, and then what you're going to do is you're going to come along. Once you get it mostly off, then you're going to use your Bright Boy, and you're going to clean it up with the Bright Boy, whatever residuals left, because sometimes your little spade might not get it on. So use your Bright Boy, and that's it. And then we'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Okay, now they're all cleaned up. Now this is what this grade crossing looks like with the embedded rails. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to show you the rest of them. And remember our foundations we were doing for our buildings? I'm going to show you that. So here we go. I'm going to pick this camera up. I'm going to move it this way. I'm going to do a little panoramic view. All right. What I did is I put my little touch on there of some scrapes and things because in the real world, these great crossings would get damaged from rolling stock, flanges, temporary derailings. They never look perfect. So I put my own little scratches and scrapes on there. You do it however you want to do it. It's the beauty of model railroad, you see. Let me come around. I'm going to show you this one here. This goes into the... So the bus can go across the rails, drop people off the train station, and we get this Pepsi plant. So, as you can see, we've got the embedded rails. Now I'm going to do a run-by. I'm going to run a locomotive through here. So before we do all that, I'm going to show you this other one. Now look at this beauty. This is absolutely beautiful. 
This is the look that we're looking for, the effect. Here's your embedded rails. All right. Beautiful. And here is the foundation for our Spectre Brewing Company. All right. Looks like concrete, a concrete slab. And all that gray paint, you're thinking, well, why is he doing that? Well, that spray oil. I did it on purpose. Cover up the um, super glaze. And you're going to scenic that. You can paint that however you want to paint it. Put some foliage over it, gravel, whatever. Because this is a brewing company, there's going to be some trucks parking there. All right, and I'm going to show you this other one. Oh yeah, this is the parking lot for the Taco Bell. Beautiful. All right, we can do some run-bys with the locomotive on this grade crossing. This is the effect you're looking for. Embedded rails. It looks just like asphalt. Rails are embedded in the asphalt. That is your effect. That's what you're looking for.
embedded rails. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to do embedded rails. So next time, we're going to do another great video. Thank you for watching. Randall Rails. Why? Because model railroading is fun. Thank you very much.